Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Hello from whichever part of the world you are joining us from. How do you do? Hello, everyone. Hi. Happy new month. Welcome to February. Black History Month, the month of love and all the above. Oh, thanks so more people are joining. Hello, Mr. Paul. How are you? Today on Checks Student Voice Series, we'll be having a wonderful conversation around education in Lebanon, especially bridging the education inequality gap in wake of the COVID pandemic and in the new normal. So I have my my guest Haya is here. Uh, Haya, please send requests to join video so that we can get started. Okay. Awesome. All right. Oh, is it network? My goodness. Hiya. Um, are you finding it difficult to join the live stream? I'm sending you an invite. Right. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy we're finally doing this. I thought Network was going to mess up. So hello, everyone. Thank you. Oh, more people are joining. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining today's episode of Chegs.org Student Voice Series, where we amplify the voices of young change makers who are students all over the world who are leading amazing innovation, creativity in their home country and contributing to global change. And today I have with me a wonderful person, Aya Youssef, who is Palestinian, but she is living in Lebanon. Aya was also one of the 50 finalists of the Global Student Prize in 2021, and I think this is just brilliant. Aya, welcome. How are you? Thank you so uh, much. For <laughs> before we start, just introduce yourself in general to the viewers so that they know what you do and all that wonderful information. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having me for today. So to start, to start with, I'm um, Aya Youssef. I'm a fourth year architecture student at the American University of Beirut. I'm a full scholarship recipient to pursue my degree for five years. And I'm an active change maker. As we all know, we've been like the uh, top 50 finalists for Shag.org. And this is based on different activities and different engagements within my uh, community, whether it's on the local or regional or even international level. Wonderful. That is wonderful. And I'm so passionate and I'm so excited about the topic we're having today, which is bridging the education inequality gap in Lebanon. Now, mm -hmm. you are Palestinian by um, nationality, but you reside in Lebanon. So please, could you just tell us some of the innovations that you've carried out around education that is, you know, helping students in yeah. your country, Lebanon? Can you tell us about it? So yeah, it basically started when I was at high school uh, back in 2016, 2017, when I started to, as a self-passion, uh, self-learner, I'm passionate about like self-learning and all, I started learning coding and programming, which is something ha that had nothing to do with my career now, which is architecture. So after like learning a bit of programming and coding, uh, I thought of sharing this knowledge uh, with the people at my school. So um, 
I founded the very first coding club at my uh, UNRWA school, which is like related to the UN. And uh, we had like plenty of students. We had around like 20 students who were interested to join us. And I started sharing this knowledge to them. And proudly, I can say like, a huge portion of this, uh, these students uh, joined STEM, uh, STEM majors at university, including computer science, computer engineering, and more. So this is like how it started, the impact of seeing started back in high school. And after graduating from high school, I joined two other partners to co-found uh, our educational startup. Uh, disclaimer, I'm no longer active with this startup, but it didn't stop me from being active in my uh, changing com uh, community. So uh, back then, we started giving um, orientation sessions and guidance for high, for high school students on how to join universities, how to apply for scholarships, and how to find these proper resources within the community. As we know, like a lot of students lack this knowledge and research and finding opportunity, finding the best match for their uh, own uh, profile and persona. So this is how it all started. So it started from a personal initiative and then we, I combined my, my initiative and my willing to help out and give back to the community with other partners. And now I'm basically working with uh, a group of architecture students. They are my close friends on um, like bringing architectural solution for uh, and for inclusiveness, basically. So for disabled people, the startup is not based yet, but we're working on the idea and also. And can't wait like to share with you uh, all the upcoming achievements and all. That is amazing. I love the fact that you are sharing knowledge. I understand that there is a gap in students accessing information that can help them secure opportunities to improve their you know, educational output. For example, scholarships. Scholarships are very important. I am schooling on scholarship. Yes, schooling on scholarship. And we know that the importance of scholarships give um, the gateway to a new life, opportunities beyond your immediate community at a particular time. And I also love the fact that you said, you know, you learned coding for yourself, even though it's, was in no way you know, similar to your course of study, which is architecture, but then you taught people and they went on to study you know, technology and computer-based uh, you know, uh, fields in the university, like computer science. And then that's just really, really brilliant because the essence is sowing seeds. The essence is you know, making investment around people. And it's not necessarily for us. It could be the good precedent for setting someone who is inspired subsequently. And I love that. Thank you so much for all you do. I am sure you're inspiring students, not just in your school, but in your country. But then my second question is, how do you, like comparing the work you do to, you know, I, I can see that you're bridging the tech uh, access to technological skills, you're bridging it, you're helping students to see alternatives to learning opportunities like scholarships, how to apply for scholarships, how to even find scholarships. What are the impacts that you've made so far? How do you think your work is bridging the education inequality gap for students in Lebanon? Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically what we've done, as I mentioned, is basically orientation and guidance orientation sessions. So within these sessions, the students were able to access our platform that merged every single information concerning the universities and scholarships that are available in Lebanon. So we were mainly working on, on the local level where you have all the information needed for you to know about the universities and scholarships. And from that, from that point, you can start your own research about each and every single uh, entity uh, or academic institution, whether it's a, a university or it's a scholarship foundation. And if you have, like, as a, as a high school student, if you have any questions, if you need more help or more support, they would have reached out to us privately or while holding our uh, our like recurring sessions so this is like mainly how we bridged the the students where they're with their best fit a university or a scholarship profile according to the criteria eligibility and many many more so what we also did is whether on a personal level or as a startup uh, level uh, we basically focused on encouraging students to be engaged in the extracurricular activities because this is the key for the student to start bridging 
the connections and like encircling themselves with better opportunities, better resources, and find like the best way out to reach what to, uh, to what they want, basically. So yeah, in short. Yeah, that is amazing because you are basically simplifying the process of uh, uh, applying to university. Really, getting schools with all the criteria, with all the, you know, the requirements, it's a daunting process. Here in Nigeria, when you're trying to apply to university, you have the seemingly popular ones, but most times, these seemingly popular schools, they don't have, you know, 21st century kind of skills, kind of courses. So some of the courses are still very outdated and you spend a whole lot of time researching on exactly. schools that have courses that, you know, fit into our time and our generation. Not the traditional you know, medicine law. Of course, medicine law is beautiful, but you know, the world is changing and we must also move with the time. So for a student who just finished secondary school or high school and they're trying to find their way, get, trying to get information to university, it can be a daunting process. Let's not even talk about you know, the fees, the funding part, because schools are expensive. Education is expensive, even though ignorance is way more expensive. So what you do basically simplifies everything, gives them, uh, invites them on this platform where not only do they see scholarships to apply for, they have, you know, people guide them. They have people who can guide them into the processes of applying to simplify it. And I think that is just, that is just wonderful. And I want to thank you for your work because as young people, it's never easy. You know, you're combining full time, uh, undergraduate study, I'm studying law, you studied architecture, and yet mm. you also you know, find time for social impact work, which is very, very, very important because multitasking, you know, intersectionalism is very important in this exactly. generation. And we have young people who are, you know, becoming leaders is not until you're 35 or, or until you're going for a political position. No, even in our individual spaces, the trainings we give to ourselves is empowering us for even bigger responsibilities and i also love how you talked about you no know, teaching exposing mm -hmm. the students to social impact really when i when i say to people where well, the concept of changing the world is let's not make it so abstract it's not one person can't just you know flip the ends and the world is better rather it is you know you do your work Working in Lebanon, I am working in Nigeria around gender equality and education. Eventually, when we collate all our activities, we realize that we are in our own way contributing our very little quota. And this thing goes a long way. So, thank you so much for what all you do. You are yes. such an inspiring person. I'm so glad you're on this conversation. You are. Now, my next, question, my next question is last year, you were one of the 50 students who made it to uh, the finalists for the inaugural Global Student Prize out, out of 3,500 nominations in 94 countries. That is a massive achievement. I am proud of you. I know you're <laughs> fabulous. That, that kind of recognition is just beyond. It, it's, it's a proof of the importance of your work as a social entrepreneur as a volunteer, as an innovator, uh, making that recognition, how has it helped you? How has it improved your work? Did it bring you attention? Were you able to influence positive change on a larger scale, maybe via lawmaking, via the legislature? How has it really, really helped you? Yeah. So speaking of like the psychological level, it just makes you feel like, beyond happier that than like um you feel your you have your fingerprint in the society and it's like um recognized globally now and this is like giving more responsibility on oneself in terms of like giving more to the community at this moment so um how it helped me basically i've connected with many people abroad or whether like in Lebanon or abroad, asking for me to like be part of their social impact, whether it's architecture, whether it's um, uh, many more fields. It's not just related to architecture. And now I see people like texting me, okay, Aya, how can we help? How can we give back to the community? Um, 
what type of volunteering can we get engaged in so this is something that i've noticed it's it's increasing by now and like i have like so many demands and you know? um i how can we take part of such a change making community and how can we give back to community where we don't have resources or the skills so this is something that um opened an eye for my circle and for the community that I, that I'm in and even the global community where I'm connecting with you I'm connecting with the other top 50 finalists where we can discuss something and we can make something in the future and we can collaborate um at one day like one day we can collaborate together and do something globally to give back to the global community and not just on the local level and this is something I'm really looking forward to in the upcoming uh, months or years no one knows Thank you so much. It's really really amazing because it it solidifies your work. It gives you this platform where people are interested in what you do and the the influence is so good that you can inspire people even farther than you can possibly imagine. I mean, yeah. here in Nigeria when I was the only Nigerian in the top 10 finalist, it was mind blowing. And the beautiful thing was I had so many people in my school in my community who came to me, "How can we volunteer? Give us you no know, connect us to volunteering opportunities." And that's just that's just important. Uh, you know, it shows that the power of young people to lead change in their community to step up to the mantle of leadership and to just you not know, do something extraordinary and extraordinary things does not necessarily have to be you know, having billions rather it's the passion the hearts the hands and the mind that is connected towards making change in our society now back to education in lebanon with the with the realities of you know the inequality for for example kids in rural communities who may not necessarily have access to a lot of you know global opportunities do you think the government is doing enough or do you think the government is supporting young innovators like yourself enough to scale your impact to scale your social impact ideas so i think to answer this question i would say that it's not just the government who is working on such a thing or such uh, like whether and providing support or like helping out or scaling up the social impact but i think like there are a lot of organizations that are based in lebanon and internationally that are always willing to help and support um whether startups ideas individuals other organizations and i think i feel like Lebanon is rich with such organizations and accelerators or even like incubators that will help these startups in order to scale connect with mentors international mentors uh, and other people around so i think like by we, with all what we do i always feel like there is always a need to give more to have more in order to like you need to have more in order to give more and this is something i believe in with, with the more you have support the more you have um someone who is always having your back you you always give back in a better way and in like more like in a stronger way to the community so i think the more connections we have um it might not just be like the government or the uh, non non-profit organizations in lebanon i feel like connecting with uh, organizations abroad uh, internationally and in other countries would definitely help us in order like to bridge this gap again not on the educational level but on, like the financial economical and way more thank you so much because uh, education is one sector that is important because this is where you know, young people are groomed before they are sent out there to dominate other sectors on talking about the financials the economy even agriculture architecture whatever it may be so education is like the foundation the the growth uh, the planting stage where you sow seeds and then it's germinate and you reap the fruits but then you said so, something wonderful about when you have more you can give more i as a young person who's working in nigeria i've always had to contend with the fact that sometimes you have to fight ages and culture because you're young people don't necessarily believe that you have the skill set or that you can actually do all the things they go how old are you i mean you were born yesterday what what makes you think you know so much more than people who are older than you are you see that yeah But then I believe that skills ability is not particular to age age is not the criteria for 
abilities it is not a criteria for personality now and when we have young people who are doing stuff rather than you know just talking nice them just applauding them and walking away it's best to uh, to invest in their ideas it is best to you know to, to like you said create accelerators opportunities for them to grow invest in their ideas support them off their back you know mentorship all these things are very important because most of us we are learning as we go we don't we didn't really have the you know backup plan we didn't really have the the generic training of being a social entrepreneur we're just we're, we're driven by passion we're driven by you know when you recognize a need in your society you want to create a solution so bridging this gap for your people who are out there doing so much work is very important we have we need these organizations to provide like mentorship funding and a whole lot to help scale some of the projects and it will even support international you know collaborations and all that so my next question is what do you think can be done because the truth is social impact is not just the jobs of social innovators or activists or advocates yeah. alone i believe in the concept of you know collaborative energy collaborative power you do yours i do mine we combine our resources and we see you know we can maximize our impact so what can, what do you think are the solutions or ways stakeholders can synergize to ensure that education inequality is diminished like to the maximum level now your work you are a stakeholder in that field because you connect young people students to opportunities what do you think needs to be done to you know to scale to like triple those kind of impact yeah so like I, while you were asking this question i was imagining having a social hub in the country where you can join the forces together and prepare like uh, a new like series of generation where you have like a stronger generation believing and giving back to the community another thing i can think of which is something i'm already taking part of uh, there is uh, the social enterprise called riada for social innovation which is which are having like a, it's a, like a parent of Shabab Lab, where uh, it usually focuses on bridging this gap between like the students and the social, um, like the 21st century uh, technical and like soft skills needed for every social entrepreneur or like every individual to have in order to be able to give back to the community without even like forcing it. So this is something that we can integrate within the uh, educational curriculum, where and this is something that Shabab Lab is already working on, where you have. um these like set of entrepreneurial skills whether it comes to finances uh social innovation and way way more these type of skills are pretty much needed within the educational curriculum because when we say education it's not just about studying math physics biology uh, and like other stuff we we need to, like to learn the skills throughout our journey and I believe this is something that we really miss in our schools in Lebanon. So this is like one of the key factors that we should work on and like have the social hub that forces this to be part of the educational curriculum in Lebanon. I it's like we're thinking the same thing because here in Nigeria I am currently working on a project it's called She Villages basically a community a social hub for young women who are social innovators so that they can access resources like funding opportunities you know uh, mentorship and all that so that they can go into their communities and you know lead change irrespective of how small or how big it is and it just shows that we are thinking in the same line to come together and have so many beautiful solutions to social issues in our individual community. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I love that our thoughts are aligning. It just shows it just shows the power of synergy that despite the obvious geographical location differences, racial differences, we are all seeing the same thing, a better world, an equal world, a world where you know opportunities are equally and evenly distributed, equity and equality on the same pedestal. And I am personally I am personally like excited about our generation because I feel that the world will be safer in our hands with the decisions we're making. I mean look at us two young people we are already thinking of now can I make my country my community better and this is hope 
this is inspiring this is home this is beautiful things to see because not only are we doing it we're inspiring others like our community our colleagues to join and we're sending out positive messages and this is the you know the best thing that could ever happen so thank you so much for joining me on this live conversation around bridging education inequality in lebanon i know i i have absolute faith in your work i know oh, that you have so many so many young people will be inspired by you which is shocking because when i posted a flyer of this conversation i had people who know you and they are nigerians you get oh, so you are yeah, in lebanon and i have people who know like oh i know that girl i've seen some of her work somewhere and this is the, <laughs> you know, the power of media you can just do something really really brilliant and it can be replicated all over the world this exactly. is the beauty of our yeah. generation and also to the, those who are viewing last year aya and hi made the finalist for the inaugural global student prize and the application is also out again if you're a young person leading change in your community you are inspirational you're innovative you don't have to have changed the whole world we believe in the power of young people and if you think this person is you go to www.globalstudentprize.org and apply we are looking for young people who are doing wonderful 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 work and who knows it just my win but what yeah. you would not know is if you don't try you never know but thank oh, you so no. much everyone www.globalstudentprize.org go take your chance at a global recognition and the chance at a hundred thousand US dollars prize That's about <laughs> <a problem. laughs> bye everyone Thank you for joining us for this Thank session. You. Please help us get the word out there. Like this video, share it, uh, um, recommend it to your friends, to stakeholders who can, you know, com contribute to bridging education, not just in Lebanon, not just in Nigeria, but in India, in South Africa, in Brazil, in Portugal, in every part of the world, because together we can make the world a better place. This is the goal. So peace. Thank you. Thank you. And bye. Bye.